Yo, what's good? Want to welcome you to the second day of Music 360. Um, happy to have you here. I'm down um, in my barn, one of my barns, my workshop area is a crazy haggard mess. Um, but you know, I do a lot of things down here. Been building uh, cabinets for the house, so I've been working on those, painting those, and then See in the far back uh, the DJ studio that I framed out and built. Um, I'm working on that, so I'll maybe give you a little tour once I get some uh, lights wired up in there and everything, and start getting that going. Throughout the whole term, I'll be working on that. So this place is probably a lot uh, where I'll do a lot of filming, um, just because I'm out of the house. Um, I don't have chickens calling and balking, and my kid running around naked, uh, drop kicking me while I'm while I'm trying to do this stuff. So. Um, anyway, so I'll probably be down here in the barn area quite a bit uh, talking to y'all um, here at Goat's Beard Homestead. So anyways, I hope y'all are doing good and um, feeling all right and, uh, you know, getting through the first week of um, fall 2020 pandemic mass hysteria mania here. Um, but anyways, today we're going to talk about, um, you know, I know this, this class is obviously about hip hop music and culture, um, history and aesthetics. And really where we have to start to like get us in there is talking about uh, the socioeconomics of New York City in a specific time and era. Um, and this will ultimately lead us, you know, to discussing and talking about institutional racism um, within that city and how that um, abuse of powers uh, within, you know, a politically, morally, and financially bankrupt uh, local government system um, kind of gave rise to the preconditions for, uh, you know, hip-hop culture and therefore hip-hop music. And um, what we're going to explore today is socioeconomics in New York City in the, you know, 60s, early 70s, as well as the gang culture there, because um, you know, really there's a lot of crossover between the, um, the gang culture in New York City of that time as, um, you know, in a way, a youth movement um, in, in the area, to, to be honest, but a lot of, like, the, the concepts of, like, crews or families, of being competitive, of, of you know, having a certain type of style, um, you know, uh, a lot of that stuff, you know, moved over into hip hop culture. But we're going to look at, you know, um, geography of New York City, um, you know, economics, um, racial politics of the city, uh, urban renewal, uh, stuff like that, and just kind of go through some terms and concepts. And then we're going to watch a film called uh, Rubble Kings, which actually talks about all of this stuff and really focuses on the gang culture and then bridges us into um, hip-hop culture in the South Bronx. So we're going to look at mainly South Bronx gangs and the South Bronx borough of New York City. It's one of the five boroughs in New York, and we'll, we'll, we'll look at some maps and go over some of that stuff. Um, but this will kind of get us into hip-hop culture, which also started in the South Bronx, which also was a youth movement, um, you know, largely like the gang cultures of young, black, and brown, mostly, um, you know, Dominican and, and majority-wise uh, Puerto Rican um, kids, teenagers um, in this particular part of, uh, of New York City, okay? Um, so we'll kind of we'll look through all those things, and then we'll watch the film at the end of uh, the end of the class, and this will bridge us nicely into next week, where we actually start to look at um, you know hip hop mu music and, and DJs and all and all that stuff. So um, you know, each day I kind of want to you have to listen to music. I mean, <laughs> you have to. It's such a punishment. Um, in this class, you you, you got to listen to music. So. I do post things on the things to do before class. Um, you know, I post YouTube links, and um, I also post uh, playlists on uh, Spotify. Now, I'll note on the things to do before class when some of the things aren't on Spotify for licensing reasons. I'll also note um, on the YouTube links often 
um, if there's like a specific part I want you to focus on. Oftentimes a, a percussive um, element called the drum, the drum break or um, what Cool Herc, the founding father of hip hop called uh, the get down, the get down part or the break, you know, essentially. Um, so I want you to think about a few things when, when, when you listen to these, listen to these tracks um, each week. Um, so think about like, what are some of the similarities in the songs and differences in the songs? These could be different things like tempo, um, cadence, um, you know, of the music itself, of the lyrical delivery, if there's lyrical delivery. You could look at similarity in content of, of the rhymes um, or content of the music. I'll often think about as types of instruments that, that you hear um, that are prevalent in, in, in the songs. I want you to think about things like texture, like how the layers of instruments or music, uh, the layers of the rhymes, etc., how they build upon each other to create, you know, um, a sort of texture. So I thought I want you to just kind of like, you know, try to process through these things. I'm not going to get too musicological on us and have us like look at timbre and and, and things like that. You know, I uh, really want us to kind of just focus on, you know some of the things that many of us who aren't musicologists, including myself, you know, um, uh, you know, can kind of pull out of these songs. So the, the five songs I asked you to listen to are, are quite different. The first one is the Ghetto Brothers, Ghetto Brothers Power. Um, and this is going to become a super important song for today because the Ghetto Brothers were, were in a very important um, youth gang um, in New York City, a group of largely Puerto Rican activists, um, loosely tied to the Young Lords. The Young Lords, um, if you don't know, they were like a Black Panther uh, party, but for Puerto Ricans who wanted to see uh, Puerto Rico essentially liberated from United States control. Um, and they were part of like that, that, that movement in, in many ways. Um, so Ghetto Brothers Power, you can hear a lot of that in, in the, uh, in the, the, the movie we watched today, Rebel Kings. We heard La Merga, which is a Willie Cologne, really important salsa joint. Um, and we're gonna have a lot of Latin funk. So, I mean, one of the things with like a lot of the early um, music that wasn't hip hop, but that was made into hip hop is there's a lot of Latin, Latin vibes and a lot of raw, hardcore, funky stuff. Um, so specifically, you know, Soul Power by James Brown. And then we listened to the Maceo and the Max version. And Maceo was, um, you know, in the James Brown band, but it's the instrumental uh, version. Um, we heard Soul, Soul Power by James Brown as well. And then we heard Soul Drummers. Now, just kind of like put these all together. Really what you pull out of them, you know, is is I want you to kind of think, these are like, these songs kind of set the vibe of what like, the youth that uh, became hip hop kind of like these are all the types of vibes that they were that they were really kind of into, um, you know. At at the time in the early '70s, a, a lot of like the the disco was kind of coming about. Um, you know, funk music was kind of coming about, but uh, you know, a lot of that stuff was a little bit more mainstream feeling. You know. So, uh, you know, really the youth were kind of like digging on the uh, raw, soul, faster stuff that wasn't quite funk music yet, etc. So, you know, the pace of these songs, the tempos of these songs, they're, kind of, they're, up, they're upbeat. You have obviously a lot of horns um, in them. You have various types of rhythms. So like in salsa music, we won't have like a, a typical, um, you know, one, two, three, four you know, pattern, you'll have a clave pattern, which is a little bit different. My uh, drum throne just sunk down. That's why it sunk down. So uh, anyways, um, uh, so yeah, so, you know, again, just we have a lot of Latin vibes here um, and a lot of soul. Um, and that kind of became the music that became hip hop culture. And we'll see a lot more of that when we get into DJ Cool Herc and the DJs and like the early foundational elements of that.